Okay, so I am working on the flatting. These are the pieces of cheese I have so far on my sandwich, right? And it looks like it's finished, but there are still a few more shapes that need to be filled in. So let me get them all because now they're no longer touching each other, any of these. If I turn off the, the gray, I'll see them clearly. They're the bright, bright whites. Actually, the gray makes it easier to see. I'm going to use my magic wand. I'm going to click on my black bread layer, my line art layer. Hold down shift. Even though these two are touching, it's fine. Even though these two are touching, it's fine. And then you don't want to miss little things like this. Now, flatting is a pretty standard entry-level digital art job for those of you who want to, to make it a, an art career. And it's not super interesting, <laughs> but it's really helpful to the artist that works on it next, who would be the colorist. So they're actually called flatting artists, and you just spend eight hours a day figuring out the shapes and filling them in with these really bright colors. Now, it gets a little bit harder professionally because you don't always have line art that's so nicely contained like mine is. So let me pick a color here. That's pretty distinct. Let's do this kind of golden yellow. All right. And then I go to my flatting layer. I got to use my my paint bucket and now all of these shapes are fully contained by other colors so i need to click them individually except those ones weren't all right so now here's a nice way to check if you got everything deselect turn off your gray turn off your black bread layer and then double click on your flatting and do a color overlay at a hundred percent of solid black, right? And what this is, is all of the shapes that make your, that make your coloring. And then if you add your black to it, there shouldn't be any gaps. Everything should be filled in and everything looks like it's filled in there. This also shows you if you have an interesting silhouette, <laughs> right? And the reason I like to show this step is because this is also a great example of this illustration as a black shape logo. Does that make sense? Which is funny because it's actually not showing any of the vector at all. It's just showing the empty space inside the vector shapes. So I'm actually going to keep that. I'm going to call that, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call that my black flatting or black flat. And then I'm going to lock that and turn it off. Now for my flatting, I'm going to turn off that effect. So I have my flatting colors. And now I'm going to make another copy of that. Turn the effects off. Duplicate it. And I'm going to call this now my local flat color. So what is the difference between flatting colors and local flat color? I'm going to lock my flatting colors and turn those off. Now, this is the lettuce. You know, what should we have on our sandwich if we have nothing else? <laughs> we should have vegetables. Cheese is tasty. It's a good way to get started. But what you should have is like a cucumber sandwich. So if I look at the slides, that are in the assignment. How can you find these slides? Just scroll up in the instructions and you'll see them right here. An exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. So far we've done the sketchy line, we've done the vector line art. Now we're going to do the flat local color. So what's the difference between flat flatting and flat local color? I'm trying to find the slides. There they are. Flatting are like any wild colors. Local flat color are the colors the things actually are. So if I did flatting on a line art illustration of a banana, I might use fluorescent green, fluorescent pink, doesn't matter. 
But if I'm swapping that for my local flat color, that's going to be yellow because yellow is the local flat color of a banana. What does local flat color look like in finished illustrations? It looks like this. The line art's just filled with one well-chosen color. Anything that's white or black, like her hair is blue, right? That's still just local flat color because black is not a color, white is not a color. Same thing here, local flat color for kind of retro animation. Same thing here, local flat color. It can work. One of my favorite colorists that uses a lot of just local flat color is Dave Stewart. So these are his flatting colors, and then this is his final color. Let's see another one that I like, Sean Galloway, local flat colors. But then he does the extra step of adding duotone. So we're going to get into that. And if we look at some past student work, this is... Uh, our digital honors student, Skylar, doing her characters. These are her local flat colors, right? And it takes some time to find the right ones. And you see how she's bringing in palettes to steal from. And it's the difference in this slide, again, between flatting and swapping those flatting colors out for the color you actually want. Okay, so back to it. What are the colors I actually want? Maybe they're from my inspiration. This is what's so fun. I can just stay on the paint bucket tool now and just use option, and I know I'm safe, and say, okay, I want the beak to be bright. I want the nostrils to be dark. Uh, maybe a little bit more greenish dark. And I still like using these, these simpli this simplified palette for my flat colors. Uh, the campus colors are blue and green, right? So I can just drop these colors in wherever I think they're most useful. And then his helmet is gray. His jaw, I want to be kind of a lighter gray. Now, why is this working? Because all of these flatting shapes are self-contained. And the paint bucket works contiguously, right? It will change the pixels of anything it touches to match. So I'm just holding down Option to select a color, and then dropping it into the color I've already filled with the flat. And I don't, I can use colors from any of these inspirations, right? I don't need to, to stick to, I have millions of color options. And brown is actually not used very much in flatting, right? But it's used very often in local color. And it can look quite dark. This is just a dark brown, not a black. You don't want a color with solid black. Let's see. Now, in professional practice, it actually makes sense to limit your colors to not very many. Usually they'll be limited to between 7 and 12. 
or full color spot illustration. That's because printing, if you do it as a silk screen print, it requires a different piece of film work for each color, right? And in professional printing, they all get mixed with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink to give you your, your color mixtures. So once you've kind of found the family of colors you like, then you can just start stealing from yourself and using those colors in other places. Oh yeah, I like that more muted green a little bit more. Let's see. These olive greens, these lighter blues. And then I can always turn on the black line art and see what that's doing right? to work with my image. So now I'm just going to steal colors from myself and start replacing them. And if I want to change a color, I can always select it with the eyedropper and then use the scale over here just to, to modify it. And the reason I like to do that flatting step is it forces you to think a little bit out of the box with your coloring, even if they end up being pretty drab <laughs> at the end of the day. It makes you just a little bit more adventurous in your color selections, I think. Yeah, something like that. And lighten it up a little bit. So maybe I can go into the light pinks. Lighten this one up a little bit. Use that here. Use it here. Whoops. Don't click on your background. And then I want a bluish version of that so I can change the spectrum here. So kind of working to make them all makes sense in the same color family. And all these little details matter. Remember, option steals the color. I don't know what I like better. Yeah, that kind of works. 